What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you about fractional exponents, okay? Also known as rational exponents. So they're just exponents that are basically fractions, right? So there's basically two kind of common cases that you're gonna run across, and that's when there's a one in the numerator here, and then the other case is just when there's basically any other numbers other than one. All right, so let's go over this first case right here. All right, so these are probably not as bad as you think, okay? Because whenever you see something raised to the one half power, something raised to the one half power, that is the same thing as taking the square root of that number, okay? If you see something raised to the one third power, that's the same thing as taking the cube root, okay? If you see something raised to the one fourth power, that's the same thing as taking the fourth root, okay? And then you could keep going, right? One fifth would be fifth root, etc. Okay, so here we have four raised to the one half power, so this is the exact same thing, as taking the square root of four, okay? And the square root of four is simply equal to two, right? So then four raised to the one half power is equal to two, right? Here we have nine raised to the one half power. So again, this is the same thing as the square root of nine. And the square root of nine is simply equal to three, right? So nine raised to the one half power is equal to three. Okay, now let's throw some negative signs in here because you need to understand this negative notation, right? So negative nine raised to the one half power, this is the same thing as the last one, okay? Nine raised to the one half power, again, is the square root of nine, right? So nine raised to the one half power, again, that's equal to the square root of nine, right? The only difference here, though, is we have a negative sign out here, right? So this negative sign, since it's not inside a set of parentheses, you just carry it on the outside right here, okay? So then to simplify this, well, the square root of nine, that's equal to three, right? And then we still have this negative sign on the outside, right? So then you just carry that over again, right? So then your answer right here would be negative three. Okay, so now in this case, we have a negative sign inside of the parentheses, right? So this exponent that's out here, this one half gets applied to everything that's inside of these parentheses. Okay, so then this is gonna be equal to the square root of negative nine, okay? Now, what is the square root of negative nine? Well, that is simply equal to nothing, right? We can't take the square root of a negative number. So here you could just put DNE, which stands for does not exist. You could put undefined. You could put this is illegal. I refuse to do this type of garbage math, okay? But in either case, right, we can't take the square root of a negative number. And we're not talking about imaginary numbers here. So again, you would just put that your answer does not exist, okay? Now let's come down here. So nine raised to the negative one half power. So the way we work with negative exponents, if you don't remember, let's just come up here. So let's say we had nine raised to the negative second power, right? That's a nine, there we go. Now the way you apply a negative exponent is basically you put this whole thing in a fraction, but you put this in the denominator, right? Underneath one. So nine raised to the negative second power would be equal to one over nine raised to the second power, right? The only difference here is here your exponent is negative, but when you throw it in the denominator here, it turns positive, right? So the exact same thing happens here. Okay, so then this would be equal to one over nine raised to the positive one half power, okay? So then we can simplify this, right? So we have one over, now nine raised to the one half power, again, that's the same thing as taking the square root of nine, right? And the square root of nine is simply equal to three, right? So then we can simplify this whole fraction as one over three, right? So that would be your answer right there. Okay, now coming up here, we have negative nine raised to the negative one half power. Okay, so again, we have this negative exponent, but we know what to do with it now, right? So this, again, would be equal to one over this whole thing, negative nine, right? That's still negative. The only thing that turns positive is the exponent. So this negative one half turns into a positive one half. Okay, and then we can keep simplifying this right here. So remember this exponent gets applied to just the nine here, right? Because this negative out here, right? We don't have parentheses here, right? So this exponent just gets applied to the number, to the nine right here. So nine raised to the one half power, again, is equal to the square root of nine, right? And then this negative sign just comes over on the outside right there, okay? So then simplifying this one more time, 
Uh, the square root of 9, again, is equal to 3. So on the bottom, we're going to have negative 3. Okay, so this is equal to 1 over negative 3. Okay, so 1 over negative 3, we can also write that as negative 1 third. Right, so that would be your answer right there. Okay, so now here we have 8 raised to the 1 third power. Okay, so in this case, we have a 3 in the denominator, right? So again, this is the same thing as taking the cube root of your number right here, 8, all right? And the cube root of 8 is simply equal to 2, all right? So 8 raised to the 1 third power is simply equal to 2. Okay, now we, here we have negative 8 raised to the 1 third power, okay? So again, this is not, this negative sign is not inside the set of parentheses, right? So this exponent is only going to get applied to the number, to the 8 right here. So again, 8 raised to the 1 third power, that's equal to the cube root of 8, right? And then this negative sign, you just carry it over right there, okay? So then we can simplify this, right? So the cube root of 8, again, is just equal to 2. And then this negative sign, you just bring that straight over right there, okay? So then your final answer right there is negative 2, all right? Now here, this negative sign is inside of the parentheses, right? So this exponent gets applied to everything that's inside of these parentheses, right? So then in this case, this would be equal to the cube root of negative 8, okay? Now, can we take the cube root of a negative number? We definitely can, right? So the cube root of negative 8 is equal to negative 2, right? That's your answer right here. Okay, now up here we have 16 raised to the 1 fourth power, okay? So again, this is, we have a fourth right here, okay? So this is going to be the same thing as taking the fourth root of your number right here, 16. And the fourth root of 16 is equal to 2, right? Now, uh, down here we have negative 16 raised to the 1 fourth power, okay? So this negative sign is inside of parentheses, right? So then this is going to be the same thing as the fourth root of negative 16. Now, can we take the fourth root of negative 16? No, we can't, okay? You can't take the fourth root of a negative number, okay? So again, this would simply be does not exist. Uh, now let's go to the next one right here. So here we have a variable, right? So 4x raised to the 1 half. Okay, so again, this exponent only gets applied to what it's attached to basically, which is this x, right? And if that doesn't make sense, well, think about if this was just a normal number. What if we had something like 4x squared? If I were multiplying this out, this would be the same thing as 4 times x times x, right? So you can see that this 2 only gets applied to the x, right? That's why we write it twice. And then this 4 is just kind of out here. Okay, so it's the exact same thing over here. This exponent still only gets applied to this x right here, right? This is not in parentheses. The 4 and the x are not in parentheses. So this 1 half only gets applied to the x, okay? So then we could simplify this to x raised to the 1 half power is the same thing as the square root of x, okay? And then we just have this 4 out here, okay? So then your answer would just be 4 times the square root of x. Okay, now coming up here, you can see the 4 and the x are in parentheses, okay? So this exponent that's out here is going to get applied to basically everything that's inside the parentheses, right? So then this is going to be equal to the square root of 4x, okay? Now, one thing we can do here is actually split these up, okay? The square root of 4x is the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of x, right? So what is the square root of 4? Well, that's equal to 2. Right, so here we really have two times the square root of x, right? That's your simplified answer right there. Okay, so here we have negative 4x in parentheses raised to the 1 half power. Okay, so since we have parentheses right here, this exponent is going to get applied to everything inside of the parentheses, right? So then this is going to be equal to the square root of negative 4x, okay? But can we take the square root of a negative number? No, we can't, okay? So then in this case, your answer again would be D-N-E, or undefined, or illegal. Okay, now let's go over the second case that you're going to come across, and it's when you basically just have any numbers here in your exponent, okay? So again, this bottom number right here is going to tell you your root, okay, or your index, okay? So for example, when there was a 2 down here, we took the square root, right? 
When there was a three down here, we took the cube root. When there was a four down here, we took the fourth root, right? So that is still the exact same thing. The only other step you have to do is deal with this top number, which is basically going to act as your power. Okay, so here we have four raised to the three halves power, right? So as you can see, we have a two in the denominator, okay? So again, this first step is the exact same way as the, the first case, okay? So since we have a two down here, we're going to take the square root of this number, okay? So then this is gonna be equal to the square root of our number right here, four, and then the only extra step that we have to do is dealing with this, x, this numerator, right? So since we have a three up here, we're going to raise this whole thing to the third power, okay? So then we can simplify this once again. So first of all, simplify what's inside the parentheses, right? So the square root of four, that's just equal to two. And then we're raising it to the third power, okay? So two cubed is equal to two times two times two, which is equal to eight, right? So then four raised to the three halves power is equal to eight. Okay, now let's come down to this one right here. So eight raised to the two thirds power. So we basically flipped this fraction, right? But again, it's the same process. So since we have a three in our denominator, again, that means we're going to take the cube root of our number right here, which is eight, okay? And again, the only other step is this numerator, right? So since we have a two up here, we're gonna raise this whole thing to the second power, okay? So then simplifying this, the cube root of eight is equal to two, right? So inside the parentheses, this is equal to two, and then we're just raising it to the second power. Okay, so then two squared is simply equal to four, right? So that's your answer right there. Okay, so now here we have eight raised to the negative two thirds power. Okay, so again, same process when we have a negative exponent, this is gonna be equal to one over eight to the positive two thirds power. So then simplifying this, this is on the bottom, uh, we have a three in the denominator, okay, so we're gonna take the cube root of our number eight right there. So the cube root of eight, and then we have a two in the numerator, so we're gonna raise this whole thing to the second power, All right? So then this is gonna be equal to one over, so again, the cube root of eight is equal to two, so we're gonna have two squared, and two squared is equal to four, okay? So one fourth would be your answer right there. Okay, now uh, down here at the bottom, we have negative 16 raised to the negative 3 fourths power. Okay, so again, we have this negative exponent, okay, but we know how to deal with that, right? So we're going to put this whole thing in the denominator, right? So negative 16, right? The, this negative out here still stays negative. The only thing that turns positive is this exponent, so that's going to be positive 3 fourths. Now, as you can see, this negative sign and the 16, they're not inside of parentheses, right? So this exponent is only going to be applied to the 16, right, right there. So we can, once again, simplify this. So one over. Now we have a four in the denominator. Okay, so we're gonna take the fourth root of 16, right? The fourth root of 16. And then we have a three three in the numerator, so we're gonna raise this whole thing to the third power, okay? Now, since we still have this negative sign out here, again, you just carry that over right there, okay? So then, simplifying this once again, uh, we'll have one on top, and now, uh, simplifying inside the parentheses first, the fourth root of 16 is equal to just two, right? So inside the parentheses, we have two, and then it's being raised to the third power, okay? And then we have this negative sign out there. Okay, so then we can simplify this again. So we're gonna have one over. Now two cubed, that's equal to eight, right? So then this simplifies to just eight. And then we have this negative sign still out here. So then we just bring that over here, okay? And we can simplify that a little bit more to negative one eighth. Boom. Okay, now uh, let's come up here. So up here we have a fraction raised to a fractional exponent, which looks kind of gross, right? But as you can see, this fraction right here, this is not in parentheses, right? So that means this exponent up here, the one half, only gets applied right here in the numerator to the 16, okay? So then we can simplify this, right? So 16 raised to the one half power is just equal to the square root of 16. So we have the square root of 16 over five right there. Okay, so then we can simplify this. The square root of 16 is equal to four, so we get four over five. 
right? That's your answer right there. Okay, now, as you can see in this example, the 16 fifths is in parentheses, right? So this one half power gets applied to the top and the bottom, okay? So then we can simplify this as the square root of 16 over the square root of five, okay? Now on top, the square root of 16, that's equal to four, right? So we're gonna have four over the square root of five. Now the square root of five is irrational, so we need to rationalize the denominator, okay? We basically can't have this radical sign here in the numerator, okay? So the way you get rid of it is by multiplying the top and the bottom by this radical sign. So we're gonna multiply the top by the square root of five and the bottom by the square root of five. Okay, so then uh, just multiplying straight across, four times the square root of five is just equal to four times the square root of five, and that's gonna be over the square root of five times the square root of five, which is just equal to five. Okay, so then that would be your answer for this one. Okay, now here we have 27 over eight raised to the two thirds power, okay? So again, we can basically split this up, right? So we can say 27 raised to the two thirds power, over eight raised to the two thirds power. Okay, so then simplifying this, uh, well, as you can see on the bottom, we have a three, right, in both cases, right? So that's like taking the cube root of your numbers right here. So that's like taking the cube root of 27 over taking the cube root of eight, okay? And again, the extra step we have here is the numerators, right? So we have a two there, to there, right? So we're gonna raise this whole thing to the second power and raise this whole thing to the second power. All right, so then simplifying this, the cube root of 27, that's equal to three. And we have that exponent right there, the squared, right? And then that's gonna be over here, the cube root of eight, that's equal to two uh, raised to the second power. Okay, so then on top we have three squared, which is equal to nine. And on the bottom two squared is equal to four, right? So then your answer right here would be nine over four. Okay, now lastly, we'll do one with a variable. So here we have four X in parentheses raised to the three halves power. Okay, so again, that means this power right here gets applied to everything inside the parentheses, right? So it's gonna get applied to the four and to the X. Okay, so in this case, we can write it as four raised to the three halves power times X raised to the three halves power. Okay, so again, we have a two in the denominators, right? So that's like taking the square root of each of these. So first of all here, we're gonna take the square root of four and we're gonna raise it to the third power, right? So we're gonna raise that whole thing to the third power and then we're multiplying that by this term right here. So X raised to the three halves power, that's actually as simplified as we can get it, okay? So you would just, since this is a variable raised to this fractional exponent, you would just leave it as that. So you would just leave it as x raised to the 3 halves power, okay? So uh, first of all here, let's simplify this. So the square root of four, that's equal to two. So here we have two raised to the third power. And then again, we're multiplying that by x raised to the 3 halves power, okay? So two raised to the third power, that's equal to eight. So then we're gonna have eight times x raised to the three halves power, right? So that's your final answer. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or wanna see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out and I'll see you there.